Hi everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Anthony Tong, and I am a director of product management at BGI Americas. My webinar title is Automated Solutions for SARS-CoV-2 Variant Identification and Surveillance. Today, I will talk about a few different aspects of SARS-CoV-2 variants. Started with the variance diversity and detection strategy, followed by the BGI and MGI's integrated workflow for the virus detection and variant differentiation. In addition, I will discuss BGI SARS-CoV-2 variant differentiation efforts. Joining me will be Sabu Linker, who will talk about our contributions to Amazon's most recent emergency use authorization in COVID-19 testing solution. He will also discuss the latest events in lab automation for COVID-19 testing. Several SARS variants are circulating globally. The most prominent variants of concern are the B117, B1351, and P1 lineage. According to the CDC, as of April 6, 2021, more than 16,000 cases of B117 variants have been reported, followed by the B1351 and P1 lineage. For B117, you can see that there are six states that have gotten more than 750 cases reported. For B1351, the situation is much better. At 14 states have no cases reported and the rest have up to 150 cases. Looking at P1, which is a branch of the B1128 lineage, you can see that half of the states already have up to 150 cases reported. This is a brief summary of the variants of concern. The SARS-CoV-2 variants the first spread around the world is known as B614G. The B117 variants, also known as the UK variants, carries a mutation in the spike protein N5C01Y that affect the confirmation of receptor binding domain RBD. This variant has 18 other B117 lineage-defining mutations. Let is known are B1351, which first emerged in South Africa, and P1, which arose in Brazil. Both of these variants have the same M5C01Y mutation as the B117 variants, and they also share the same E484K mutation. Another key SG mutation for B1351 is K417N. Collectively, these variants we see here potentially make COVID more transmissible, reduce antibody binding, immune protection, as well as vaccine efficacy. The figure here not only give another picture of the mutations in the RBD that I mentioned on my previous slide, such as N501Y, E484K, and K1417N, but also the deletion in the amino terminal domain NTD. Here, 
I want to draw your attention to a deletion at positions 69 and 70 that evolved spontaneously in other SARS-CoV-2 variants and is hypothesized to increase COVID transmissibility. PCR and NGS are the two most common strategies used to identify the SARS-CoV-2 mutations. PCR has several advantages as the instrument is found in most molecular diagnostic labs. The workflow is rapid and simple, being cost-effective and highly sensitive, and the result interpretation is easy. However, the disadvantages of PCR include detecting a small number of known mutations, having no variant resolution and scalability, as well as virtually no discovery power. Looking at NGS, this strategy has high throughput and scalability. It is highly sensitive and has high variant resolution and strong discovery power. However, next-gen sequencers are not always found in molecular diagnostics lab. NGA is also more expensive and have a longer turnaround time than PCR. Dedicated bioinformatics is also needed. I want to note here that auto PCR appear to be superior to NGS for SARS-CoV-2 mutation detection, the World Health Organization has recommended the use of NGS to confirm the mutations identified by PCR. To address the need for detecting the emerging SARS-CoV-2 mutations, BGI has launched a variance ID panel. This panel consists of three mutation detection kits, which are for research use only at this time. This kit detects many detections that I mentioned on my previous slides, testing 50 samples per kit for samples collected by Tholswap and Sputum. The test has also been validated on Quant Studio 5, Sandy 2500 Fast, and Light Cycler 480. User can also use RNA extraction key from MGI and Kyogen. Speaking of the SE features, BGI variant identification kit is based on the ARMS qPCR with human beta acting as an internal control. The kit is manufactured in BGI, ISO compliance, and high volume production facility. QC is also stringent with positive and blank controls. Users can bundle this kit with BGI RT-PCR kit for detecting the coronavirus and its variants. The figure here show our variant identification workflow where you can see after the samples are collected, the user can use the MGI kit to extract the viral RNA and then use the BGI kit to run RT-PCR for detecting the SARS-CoV-2 mutations. Instead of manually preparing the reagent for extraction and PCR, the user has an option to use the SP960 system to automate the reagent preparation. My colleague Sabu will tell you more about this system later in this webinar. Once the PCR reagents are ready, the user can run the reactions in one of the PCR machines that you see here and finally proceed to data analysis and reporting. Using the MGI SP960 automation system gives the labs two main benefits. First of all, 
the system can proceed can process the reagent for 192 samples in 80 minutes. Secondly, the system only takes a total of 2.8 hours from RNA extraction to data analysis for 36 to 96 samples. Comparing to the turnaround time of 3.5 hours by preparing the reagents manually, the automation saved the lab about 0 0.7 hours. In other words, approximately 42 minutes. BGI SARS-CoV-2 variant ID kits offer multiple benefits. The user can bundle the purchase of this kit with BGI SARS-CoV-2 detection kit. The two types of kits require very similar lab settings and procedure. Later in this webinar, I will tell you more about this high competi compatibility. The mutation detection kits are also highly sensitive with a LOD of 1,000 viral copy per milliliter. Another advantage, as I mentioned previously in my talk today, since our mutation detection kit use PCR only, no NGA instrument and bioinformatics are needed. Continuing on the previous slide, our detection kits have a fast turnaround time. RT-PCR itself only takes one hour. Lab can also run the detection assay in a high throughput manner with our easy to use reagents and easily interpret the results. Going back to one of my slides, I mentioned that user can handle, can bundle this kit with BGI RT-PCR kit for detecting the coronavirus and its variants. With that said, here you can see our RT-PCR kit for detecting the coronavirus. This kit has been authorized by the US FDA for in vitro diagnostic use by the Emergency Use Authorization, commonly known as EUA. The EUA applied to the COVID-19 testing workflow with three components that I highlighted here is three red boxes, and they are the MGI RNA extraction kit, the BGI RT-PCR kit, and the MGI SP960 automation instrument. Although not covered by the EUA, Lab also had the option to use the MGI STP7000 automation instrument to enhance sample transfer, including tube decapping and recapping, barcode identification, and liquid transfer. From sample to result, this workflow using the MGI SP960 automation system only takes 3.3 hours for processing up to 192 samples, 80 minutes for reagent preparation, one hour, 25 minutes for PCR, and 25 minutes for data analysis and reporting. For lab that use the RT-PCR SARS-CoV-2 detection kit, which have received the EUA, and the variant ID kit, which are RUO for the same samples. The user will find all the kits very similar in their utilities. In the table here, you can see that both of them can be used for the same sample types and RNA extraction kit. When preparing the PCR reagents, the user will notice that the procedure for getting their reaction mix, enzyme mix, and controls are also similar. In terms of equipment, 
the same set of PCR machine and automation instrument have been validated to use for testing the virus and its barriers. Here, I want to emphasize that despite the synergy in using this kit together, the variant ID kits can be used independently without using the coronavirus detection kit. In February this year, the FDA published a policy for evaluating the impact of viral mutation on COVID-19 tests and a guidance for test developers as well as FDA staff. And we know some of the mutated virus spread more easily and faster than others. Identifying variants in the population and tracing their origin have become a top priority in the battle to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. As a test developer, BGI has stepped up its surveillance effort, which primarily consists of, number one, monthly review of article and public health reports. Number two, our monthly in silico analysis. And number three, our quarterly functional validation with wet lab testing. Every month, our R&D team review published articles, news, and public health reports to identify emerging mutations and assess their potential inference based on where these mutations are found and whether they overlap with the mutations targeted by our variant ID keys. Meanwhile, our R&D team downloads all SARS-CoV-2 genomes published in GISAID, which stands for Global Initiative on Sharing Avian Influenza Data, in order to compare the targeting sequences in these genomes with respect to the primer and probe sequences associated with BGI SARS-CoV-2 variant ID keys. Using the information taken by the literature review and in silico analysis, our R&D team analyzed the theoretical impacts of these mutations on our SARS-CoV-2 detection kit. Though mutation with potential impact for the kit performance will be further validated by web-led testing. In our lab, plasmid with mutation will be prepared, tested by our variant ID kits, and evaluated whether the limit of detection established by the kit is compromised. The figure here shows BGI's second major genomic surveillance effort for SARS-CoV-2. Starting from the bottom of this figure, when a patient sample is received, we apply our RT-PCR kit to determine if the sample is positive or negative for the virus. If positive, we can apply our variant ID panel to, identif uh, to identify which strain the virus belong to. Next, we sequence the sample and use the genome assembly data generated to compare the data that already exists in our database. This allows us to discover new mutations and also confirm any mutation that we already know. Here, I'm showing the latest update for our RT-PCR kit. We demonstrated that the kit performance is not compromised by the variants of concern and the variants of interest currently listed by CDC. The lineage strain covers those originated in UK, 
South Africa, Brazil, California, and New York. The in silico analysis and functional validation that I described earlier conclude our findings. Also, we achieved a 100% concordance with our validation and quality protocols for all samples tested. BGI has published a technical notes in this topic. If you would like to receive a copy of this document, please contact us at bgi discover at bgi.com. This slide concludes the part of my presentation. Thank you for attending my talk today. Now I will pass my presentation to Sabu from MGI. Thanks, Anthony, and good afternoon to everybody. My name is Subodh Nimka, and I will present MGI's COVID-19 extraction solutions portfolio. First, I will take you through MGI's role in SARS-CoV-2 testing worldwide. Then I will present automated sample transfer systems, automated extraction systems, and MGI's extraction kits portfolio. And I will end with COVID-19 mobile lab offering that we have. BGI and MGI have been involved in COVID-19 sequencing almost from the day one, and we were one of the first one to sequence the genome. Since then, we developed a variety of products that include extraction kits, automation system, RT-PCR test kits. And in the last year or so, our installations are in over 100 countries, more than 1,000 systems running 24-7, and we have enabled customers who are performing 2 million tests per day. Our customer base includes both government entities as well as private organizations, and they span across the entire globe, which includes North America, Europe, South America, Africa, Asia, China, and Oceania. MGI plays a role in entire workflow for COVID-19 detection, which starts with samples or swabs in a VTM tube and ends in an RT-PCR test result. MGI offers STP-7000 system that is capable of sample transfer. Then we have extraction systems of two different types one performing just extractions, and then the other performing both extractions and RT-PCR prep. We have a range of extraction kits to support these extraction automation platforms. And as you heard from Anthony, we have a EUA for an RT-PCR test and also a variety of variant detection kits that we recently launched. Going into a bit more detail about the STP-7000 automated sample transfer system. This is a sample transfer system that transfers the sample in the VTM tube containing swab to a 96 deep well plate. It does decapping of the tube. It does sample accessioning, that is barcode reading. It aliquots the samples or transfers the samples into a 96 well plate, and then it recaps the tube for archiving. It is capable of doing 7,000 samples a day. It is a safe system for the operator, and it's equipped with UV and negative pressure HEPA filter. It is capable of handling multiple types of tubes, which are different dimensions and different volumes. It is very accurate and it's equipped with the liquid detection and it can be connected to any LIMS systems in the lab. Here, I will quickly demonstrate how actually this system works with this using this video. In the 7000 system workflow, 
VTM tubes containing swabs are loaded on the trays and then trays are placed on the deck of the system. The process begins with tubes being moved for accessioning by reading the barcodes. Once the barcodes are read, the tubes are moved to a capping decapping station. In this first step, the tubes are decapped. Once the decapping is done, they are moved to a deck position where the sample, the VTM, is now aliquoted into the deep well plate. The tubes are then moved back to the capping decapping station where they are capped and moved back to the tray, the original location. 7000 system is the only system that does everything in one box. Then coming to the MGI extraction kits. All the extraction kits MGI offers are magnetic bead based and they follow a very traditional workflow in which the samples are lysed, then the nucleic acids bind to the magnetic beads, then the magnetic beads are washed off to remove all the contaminants and possible PCR inhibitors, and then the nucleic acids that are bound to the beads are eluted in the elution buffer. And this, this way, the 96 well plate that's prepared is ready for RT-PCR prep. We have four different automation platforms and they vary in their throughput and the way they do extraction. So what you see on the left here and all the all these platforms uh, support 96 well. They are all UV and HEPA filter equipped. They support swabs and many other sample types and all the consumables and plastics required for this automation are supplied by NGI. MJSB 960, these are the liquid handlers. So MJSB 960 and MJSB 100, these are the liquid handlers capable of doing extraction as well as RT-PCR prep. And 960 can do 192 samples in 80 minutes. The systems on the right, SP ME32 and ME384, these are, as I call it, bead handlers. They perform only extraction. I believe any 32 is probably the fastest extractor on the market, can do 32 samples in nine minutes, and it's a truly plug and play system. Any 384, the big brother of any 32, can extract 384 samples in 20 minutes. And I believe this is probably one of the highest throughput uh, extractor on the market. And again, this system is also a plug and play system. This slide shows you the range of extraction kits that NGI offers. And these extraction kits are matched with the extraction platform. So 960, 384, 32, and SP100. I would like to get your attention to the limits of detection. Both NGI SP960 and any 384 system have a limit of detection of 100 to 150 copies per ml. As I already mentioned, 960 can do 192 samples in 80 minutes, whereas any 384 can do 384 samples in 20 minutes. The input volume is from 160 to 200 microliters, whereas output volume is about 50 microliters. I would like to take you through one of the examples of how we enabled a big organization like Amazon in their initiative for COVID-19 detection. Last year, early fall, we got involved in Amazon's initiative. And that time, the stated goal from Amazon was uh, at least 50,000 tests across 650 sites. MGI brought in all the tools that we had at our disposal that included a BGI's RT-PCR test kits, MGI extraction kits, MGI automation, 
and more importantly, the applications and service support. Our application scientists were involved in implementation as well as method modification required per Amazon's need. We trained Amazon's lab staff and we did 24 seven support. And more importantly, we ensured that we have an uninterrupted supply of kits and consumables. With our joint efforts, Amazon achieved an EUA that was just recently announced for their own COVID-19 detection test for employee testing. Our contribution or Amazon's choice for MGI solution was the following. They chose BGI's RT-PCR kit and MGI's extraction kit and MGI's automation for extraction and pooling. Amazon's EUA or method includes pooling and then MGI 960 system supports that pooling workflow as well. Test sites which are looking for a faster, maybe cheaper alternative to traction-based RT-PCR testing, we at MGI are going to announce and release a product that will support extraction-free PCR test. So basically, we are making available a VTM tube that has a media that will enable extraction-free RT-PCR test. And in this workflow, our STP7000 automated sample transfer system will transfer the media that has swab in it to a 96 well plate. And these 96 well plate containing samples will directly go to RT-PCR test. Now, it is definitely a faster, involves less steps and less equipment, but there is a penalty. And the penalty that we have seen is in the limit of detection, which is 800 copies per ml compared to 100 or 150 copies per ml that we see with extraction. But when we do an apples to apples comparison of two extraction kits, for example, MGI and Kyogen, we see that our extraction free workflow has an LOD of 800, whereas Kyogen is 1000 copies per ml. This kit and the VTM will be available by the end of April this year. Lastly, mobile lab solutions. MGI offers three solutions for mobile lab. One is a vehicle based, a bus based. Second is a container and third is uh, a tent. All these setups have a typical floor plan. There are three functional areas. They're all isolated to prevent contamination. And these areas are reagent preparation, sample preparation area, which also includes the automation systems, biosafety cabinets, and an RT-PCR testing rooms. It has built-in air conditioning and electrical control room to, to support the entire setup. These installations comply with uh, BSL-2 standards, and they differ based on, on the area or the functional area in that, in that installation. And all the specs that we, uh, we guarantee are, are mentioned uh, on this slide here. There are different throughput possibilities. They start from 2,000 samples per day to 30,000 samples per day. These really depend on the, the footprint of the container, for example, whether it's a 40-foot container or a 45-foot container, and the size of the tent, and the number of automation systems uh, that are outfitted in these uh, installations. Last but not the least, at MGI, we completely understand and appreciate the changing and unpredictable future of COVID-19 testing. And our goal is to enable as many test sites as possible so that 
we help manage this pandemic and put, put it behind us. So in that effort, MGI is going to support testing capacity expansion. And to do this, we are offering automation systems on a $0 lease to, to labs who want to either expand capacity or whether who wants to set up a new lab, but do not want to take risk of capital investment at this stage of the pandemic. So we are trying to help as much as we can. And we also assure these labs that you will always get a constant supply of kits, consumables, plastics, everything that is needed to keep the testing going. With that, I will end my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. And Anthony, myself, Juling Liu, and Chris True are happy to answer questions. Okay, let's get the Q&A started. Today, I'm also glad that Juling Liu and Chris Chu from BGI will also join our Q&A session. Juling is our field application scientist based out in Montreal, Canada. And Chris is our senior manager of technical support based out in BGI's lab in San Jose, California. Today, we have time to answer a few questions that came before and during the webinar. To make it easy for everyone, I will read the question and show them on the screen as I speak. And the first question is, you mentioned the limit of detection of your RT-PCR SARS-CoV-2 detection kit is unaffected by the variant of concern and variant of interest listed by CDC. My understanding is that some of the reported mutations are not only in the S gene, but also in some other genes. Can you comment more on that? Hi, this is Julian from BGI. I can answer this question. According to the CDC website, so far the key mutation report for variants of concern are mainly located in the S gene of SARS-CoV-2. But the target gene of our BGI SARS-CoV-2 detection kit is located in the ORF1AB. Therefore, this reported mutation in S gene do not affect our kit performance. Although in B117 lineage UK variants, four mutations were also reported in ORF1AB. But only one mutation is located in our target region. During the time of today's webinar recording, our recent functional validation data demonstrate that PLASMI expressing tested mutation did not compromise the performance of our assay. So we believe that our SARS-CoV-2 detection kit can be used to efficiently assess infection status of individual and help pandemic control. Thank you, Juling. Here is the second question. In your genomic surveillance efforts, tell me more about the procedure of your wet lab work in functional validation and what criteria did you use to evaluate your results? Hey, this is Chris True from BGI. I can answer this question. Uh, as Anthony showed in his presentation, we tested the plasmids with mutations by using our SARS-CoV-2 detection kit. To elaborate, we synthesized in vitro the sequences with mutations that met our predefined criteria. And we also synthesized sequence without the target mutation. And these sequences are then expressed in plasmids. Following that, we sequence the synthesized plasmids to verify that the mutations are correctly expressed in the plasmids. Then we serial diluted the plasmid without the target mutation and those plasmids with mutant sequences at different concentrations. Finally, 
we run PCR and compare the CT values from our experiment and those value values from the reference plasmids. If the experimental LOD is within three times of the lowest LOD that we established, then we consider the mutations involved to have no significant impact to our kit performance. Great. Thank you, Chris, for your answer. Here is the next question. Can user buy your SARS-CoV-2 detection kit and variant identification kit as a bundle with discount? I understand that the detection kit can receive the emergency use authorization from the FDA. The BGI planning to submit the identification kit to the agency for EUA. I can actually answer this question. The discount is certainly available for our users, uh, but I would say that uh, it had to do with how many kids want it going to purchase. Regarding the question for regulatory submission of our variant identification kit, BGI is currently monitoring the pandemic situation and will decide if this submission is necessary. By the way, I want to say that our coronavirus detection kit have received CEIVD, so the user should not worry about the key performance. For our variant identification kit, it is for research use only at this time, and user may validate the key performance in their clinical lab for their lab developed tests. To learn more, we have two FAQ documents on our website. Feel free to check them out or contact one of our reps. It looks like um, those are the questions that we have received so far. With that said, thank you very much again, everyone for joining us today. If you have any other questions for this webinar and our products, please don't hesitate to contact us at bgi-discover at bgi.com.